If you're an athlete and your goal is to run faster, I'm going to give you three workouts in one big compilation. You're gonna get two acceleration workouts and one max velocity. The two acceleration workouts are going to be zero to 20 yards and then mainly a zero to five yard focus, so a power and strength day. And you're gonna have a max velocity day that improves your top end speed. I'm gonna give you all the reps and sets. It's going to be the first week of the Speed Academy, everything you possibly need to increase your speed. Let's get straight into it. If you want to run faster, I'm going to put you through a full workout from the Speed Academy. I'm going to give you reps, sets, everything you need. We're going to have our boy Carl right here go through the workout. I'm going to show you everything you need from the Speed Academy. Let's get straight to it. All right, what are we doing? Kneeling right here. And then I'm going to put a tennis ball in between this knee, okay? You can extend a little bit, kind of catch it with the, with the calf. And I want you to crush this tennis ball as hard as possible, okay? So you're going to pull this foot, foot backwards. Now crush it as hard as possible. You feel a good, good squeeze right there. Now I want you to drive this knee back and forth. So it's just like this, okay? Right now? Yeah, so do about 15 reps. Just simple, yep, that's good. How's that feel? You should feel a lot of tension in the knee, but we're trying to release a little bit of the tension up front. All right, that's good. Now we're here, same thing on the tennis ball. We're just gonna lay down. This one's gonna be a little bit weirder to find. You just wanna find a very tight spot in your glute. You see I'm just sitting on it and you're kinda of just rolling. It's gonna be very tense, so don't sit and put all your pressure on it. Kinda of use your hands a little bit and just roll through it. As you get a little more comfortable, you can put a little more pressure into the ball, right? And then just find like some, some, some weird spots, get some tension out of it. You can do both, probably for 10, 10 little circles each side. Yeah, that's facts. Okay. Yeah, it's kinda of like some foam rolling. Like I could've got a, a, an actual foam roller, but everyone has a tennis ball, so. And the tennis ball is a little more like actual tension. You don't have to put too much pressure into it, but definitely try to roll out some tension in there. This motherfucker trying it. Yeah. That felt good? Okay, you can just stay sitting. I usually do banded ankle circles here, but I just want you to go through unbanded because I don't have the band with me. Full range of motion, doing this full circle. Do about 20 each direction. So full up and down, full circle. You want to do a sitting. Oh. Sorry. No, you're good. All right, full, full circle, both directions, 20. Uh, just get a little bit of a burn. It's not gonna feel like anything too crazy. Yep. But all the way, try to feel out every single movement. You should kind of feel like your ankle's cracking a little bit. Every inch right here, okay? 20 each direction too, my bad. So it's gonna be 40 in total. Might start burning at the very end, like the last five. Shins hurt a little bit, burn it all. Okay. Shins definitely a little bit, okay. Especially after all that basketball yesterday. <laughs> okay. Where you at? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yep. Oh, that was bad. It's okay. You just need to finish football for a little bit. All who don't know, Carl played football in high school, and he's a beast. But Iowa State didn't want to give him a tryout. They didn't want to give anybody a tryout because the whole COVID thing but he probably would be a starter. He's probably one of the best athletes I've ever seen. So you're gonna see a really good workout by a really good athlete um, who deserves a spot. So we're gonna get after it though. No, that's okay, that's okay. We can, uh, we'll do one more and then we'll actually start moving. Uh, it's gonna be a hamstring isometric. You probably see me do this before. You're gonna get into a bent knee position, just like here. It's a little quarter squat. And you're gonna drive into your heels just to lift off your butt. But I don't want you to extend the lower back I want the lower back to be pushed down and all you feel is a lot of hamstring. You might feel it in the back of the knee right here and you might feel it here. It just depends on how you do it. You're good. You don't have to keep going. You're fine. <laughs> You're good. I felt, my vein, I felt like my nerve just like Okay. Squishing. Okay. Weird. So yeah, flat back, push your lower back in and you're gonna push off the heels, okay? You do a little bit less, a little bit less. Yep, that's good. Yep, I'm counting. Well, how long are you doing this for? You feel it. You feel it? Okay. Now try turning these, the top of your toe in a little bit. Does that feel a little bit different? Yeah. Okay. That's gonna be get a little more inner hamstring, which might help you with your knee pain just a little bit. Might flare it up just a little bit though. We'll see. Out of 10, how you feel? How much longer? Oh, like, I'm like We'll do one more and then we actually get going, my bad. I meant to do this, I forgot. So now it's a hip bridge, right? So just like a hip thrust, but now we're marching. So we're here and we're striking down, right? Now, a big thing I want you to resist is this lateral tilt. 
I want you to strike and keep this pelvis neutral this whole time and stop yourself from kind of going like this or like this, okay? <laughs> bridge, yep, blue bridge. I just want you to march from here, yep. So, if you want to see someone who's fast, keep going, keep going. If you want to see someone who's fast, their hips don't tilt side to side. It shows a lot of strength in the hips. If you have a lot of strength in the hips, then your actual pelvis, so these bones on the side, won't be doing this. It'll be staying neutral. And it's gonna transfer over to sprinting. So it's a real big P. We'll do about four more each leg. So eight in total. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And crawl, like I said, it's extremely strong and extremely fast. So let's do it. Agua. Yeah, you can take a break if you're tired at all. We're chilling. All right, so you're gonna do a band resisted A skip. So basic A skip. We're doing heel to knee, right? And then we're just skipping. Don't overthink it. You just want good posture and strike down, all right? That's all I want you to think about is just striking down. I'm gonna band resist you for a little more glute and we get straight to it. We'll go until I just tell you to stop, okay? Whenever you're ready, yep. That was good. You're gonna go for a little bit longer than you think, so just keep going. Good job. Yep. Nice. A little bit more. Probably like five more yards. All right. Solid. We're going to do the other way. We'll go a little bit farther. You should be able to hear him stomping on my mic, actually. All right. You're good. It's tiring. It's tiring? All right. We'll do one more then. The next one is just a switch. So skipping, you're like here. It's a little bit more of a lazier, but now switching, we're switching midair. So now the foot, instead of going like this, we're going here. Okay? It's gonna be much shorter. I'm really gonna have you go like five to 10 yards with the band resistance, okay? So just think we're switching midair like that, okay? Think about you just having this knee up and then switching midair. Switching midair like that, okay? What the fuck? Yep, you got it. That's perfectly fine. We're gonna go probably like five to 10 yards. Just one time. Yep, switch, switch. There you go, got it. He's a natural. I've never done these with him before. A little bit farther. All right, all right, you're good. Cool, you're done. In terms of fatigue, how you feel? That's a little, a little gas, a little bit much. That's perfectly fine if it is, okay. That's cool. We can stop there. My heart fatigue? Yeah. Eight. Okay, okay. Sit for about like two to three minutes. We'll get straight into it. Usually, um, like what you'll see in the actual Speed Academy is instead of all these drills, I don't want to teach technique all the time. So we'll do just like extensive A skips or extensive karaoke. So what I would have him do naturally in the Speed Academy workout is just skipping here, but it's for extensive periods of time. So it'll be one to two to three minutes straight and then also the same thing karaoke for one to two minutes and then backwards for one to two minutes. And what you're doing is you're actually grabbing a lot of elastic contacts on the ankle and you're even building a little bit of that cardio work capacity, which you need for sprinting. You can't only do one to two sprint reps and then burn out. Over time, you have to build that work capacity. So if you're doing the Speed Academy, you're doing the free workout, you can do it in the link in the bio, just download the app, you get the workout for free, just put in your email, you'll see stuff like that. So if you're short on time, in terms of the warm up, you can literally just do skipping for one minute, karaoke for one minute, backwards skip for one minute, and that's your warm up. You usually will be good. You develop a lot of elasticity. This next one we're gonna do, this is the main part of the warm a workout. It's gonna be resisted sprints. So right now I have about, you're what, 200 pounds, 10 to 20% of your body weight in this sled right here. It's kind of a janked up sled. All you're gonna do is put your thing around here. You're gonna sprint as fast as possible. I'm gonna time the actual distance of it and see what your times are, try to like compare it every single time. So I'll put some shoes down to actually measure the distance. But uh, we'll do some different positions. So sometimes, like in football, you're gonna be right here, just in a regular two point. Sometimes you might need like here, right? You're trying to develop multiple aspects, right? So we might have you do some just normal right here, some kneelings, some side to side sprints. We'll do like six to eight of them, okay? Is that cool? Um, from right here, this will be your start. And then I'm gonna measure out 20 yards. 
and we're just doing 20 yard sprints, high rest, walk it back, okay? Cool. What's cool about this is that I usually do laser timing, so I'll have like skills, free lap timing, or whatever it is, but I'm actually just gonna use my phone. I'm gonna show you how I use my phone to show that you can get faster with barely any equipment. This right here, a sled, is 10 bucks, 10, 20 bucks from Amazon, and then you use your phone, you time your sprints, you can do it with a selfie stick or a shoe, and you're good. So I'm gonna show you how to do it with as little equipment as possible. All right, let's move this over, because I don't want you to run into any rocks. I was looking over at the ground. This should be good. And then uh, you can get going whenever you're ready. All I want you to do is beat your time, okay? Run as fast as possible. Whatever your time is, just beat it. It's that simple. And whenever you're ready, I'm already timing you. You can do a two point. So these first couple, we're just gonna be in the quarter stance and explode off as fast as possible. Just like you're actually releasing off somebody, like a defender. You're here like that, you're just gonna sprint, okay? Just run straight, yep. Yep, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. That motherfucker is actually fast. Leave that set over there. No, no, this is 10%, we're good. When we're doing resistance sprints, we're always going for max intensity. So we're gonna record it, we're gonna time it, and then resistance also raises the intensity enough. Then what we're gonna do is do high rest. So what you see a lot in football, and probably his football coaches in high school, is that you're gonna do a 10 yard sprint, a 20 yard sprint, and then you're just gonna go. Right? Oh, just work harder, just work harder. We're not doing any of that. We're literally just gonna rest. Rest, we're gonna sit around for two, three minutes. It's gonna be really boring. And we're gonna do another one at max intensity. Every single one, we want max output. That's all we care about is max output. We're trying to get stimulus. So that's all that really matters. Um, in terms of reps and sets for resistance sprints, we'll probably do 120 to 150 meters in total. So that'll be six to eight sets of 20 yards is really what we would do in the speed academy you'll see it we'll probably do like six sets of 20 yards in the speed academy so yeah how's the resistance really light that felt really light oh, i want to i want it to be i want to feel light but just something like a little like yeah. okay trust me it's something okay but it ain't no so it's 12 percent of your body weight you don't ever want to go above 20 percent okay so if you ever do resistance sprints by yourself 20 percent for you would probably be like 35 pounds never go above 35 pounds always stay around 20 to 30, okay? So we want resistance, but we won't, you don't want your mechanics to change from it being too heavy, right? So that's all that matters. This will develop power, all the things you need, so. Um, we'll do another 20 seconds and you can go. So if you wanna get ready right now, it's up to you, it don't really matter. How do you feel though? You feel fresh? Yeah. Okay. He said he can't wait till, till Monday. For Monday? Oh yeah, you're gonna go crazy. This dude, Lily ran for over 100 yards. What did you do like? You probably did like 150, I'm not gonna lie. It was ridiculous. And he plays like running back, right receiver, all that. He's, re he's literally insane. Okay, so that was four, literally 4.0 seconds. Just try to beat it. That's not bad. 20, that was 20 meters. It's not 20 yards, it's 20 meters. So that's like 25, 26 yards and you're doing resistance. So that's, that's what it should be, all right? So just try to beat that, okay? Whenever you're ready, I'm recording you. Good stuff, how you feel? Chilling, all right. We can cut back on reps too. I'm not gonna kill you, so. Go ahead and sit, you got four minutes, okay? You're literally chilling, you can go on your phone if you want. All right, you started at 11.96. You started at 11.96 and finished at 16.17. 16.17. That was 424. I'm not gonna lie, I probably measured the first one incorrectly. So you looked faster on that one, but I, I couldn't really see from my other angle. But that's cool. Uh, I got you on a timer. So four minutes, like I said, always rest. For every 10 yards you go, it should be two minutes. So if you run 20 yards, it should be four minutes. If it's 10 yards, two minute rest. Literally just sit down. People ask me all the time. They always text me like, what should I be doing? Like, I don't know. Should I be jogging around? I don't feel right sitting down. Literally sit down. Like you see how he is right now? He's about to go on his phone, watch some TikTok. That's perfectly fine. Go ahead, sit on your phone and just do absolutely nothing. Drink water and just chill. I want you as rested as possible. We can do two more, okay? Two. I was gonna have you do like six to eight, but that's perfectly fine. Over time, like when you're working in the Speed Academy, you might only do three reps and you could do one set of everything if it's too hard, but that's perfectly fine. If you wanna do two reps, that's better than zero. 
and you'll still make amazing gains because that's just where you're at right now. But if you don't have the work capacity to do six to eight, you don't need to do six to eight. It's not that deep, all right? Whatever is your max intent, the second you drop off by 10%, or I'm sorry, 5%, so let's say his PR is 4.2 right now. If he drops off by 5% and runs a 4.3, he's done for the day. So that might be two reps, that might be three reps. It doesn't really matter, right? So don't over obsess over volume, but it wouldn't be bad to hit it though, so. Zero one. Okay, you ran 4.54. Okay, my bad, <laughs> my bad. So you went from 4.54 to 4.2. So that's a whole 0.3 to 0.2 improvement just off of timing yourself and doing another sprint. That's how much faster you ran, okay? So let's do 4.1, all right? And then maybe we might even get 4.0 this time. But you got it though, okay? That's good shit. That's good shit. And like I said, this is 20 meters, so don't even trip about the time. It's not 20 yards. Like I can literally tell you right now, because I don't have the number, 20 meters in yards. You should be able to hear on my actual microphone, every single step he takes, especially with that resistance, it almost sounds like he's ripping the ground apart. Something that uh, was really interesting, there was a fast guy in Illinois, his name was Marcellus Moore. And at a track meet, every single time he ran like 10-3 in high school, he was like a freshman, right? Um, or it was when he was a sophomore. So every single step he took, it sounded like he was actually stomping someone, like literally stomping. And then especially when you got spikes on, every single step, it just sounds like boom, 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 boom. This is just a, how you know you're producing force or not. So it's a nice little tidbit. How you feel? Cool? All right. Oh, you want a time? Sorry. My bad. <laughs> All right. You started moving at 21.61. God damn. You stopped running really early. 6.64. 4.02. Look at that. You went from 4.54 to 4.2 to 4.02, one workout. All right. It's as accurate as you can get without FAT timing, boohoo. All right. It's way better than hand timing because hand timing, you could be off by a whole one to two seconds just off reaction. So you record it, you just look at the frame where he started and look at the frame where his hip uh, went past the second shoe. There's your time. It's really not that complicated. Look how much faster you got. All right. Can we do three? You want to do three or you're done? Oh, no, no, no. Seconds? You want to get 3.9 or are you done? Okay, okay, okay. okay. Hey, I mean, I'm just saying, like, you might as well. You might as well. I don't know. All right? Yeah, one or two more. Cool. I better see a 3.9. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got it. Hey, but you're chilling, though. If you want to go grab your phone, you're good. Or grab some water. You got another, like, two minutes. So this is a little bit of that work, bro. It's boring, but this is how you get better, right? Um... Like I said, if you're already in here, get on the Speed Academy. All you have to do is download the app. You get the full workout for free. You get two workouts. It's actually a little bonus. You get two workouts, and if you want to hop on the Speed Academy, hop on it. You don't want to. That's cool, too. But you at least get faster with that one workout. So I'm really showing you the exact workout reps and sets. But if you want it on an app where you get all the video demonstrations, not all this fluff in between, you'll be good. So go check it out. Link in the bio. And pin comment. It'll be free, too. Literally just put in your email. Like you're actually trolling if you're an athlete and you don't do this. Like, I don't know what you're doing. And you're still watching, you haven't clicked that link in the bio. What are you doing? Interesting. You're, you're interesting, bro. I got tabs on you, bro. You're, you're trolling. You're trolling. That's cool. You're trolling. That's fine. <laughs> I'll put some captions over you, bro. Huh? I'll put some captions over you. He said my arousal levels are too high. If he doesn't hit this PR today, then we're done, all right? So he's either going to run a PR or he's going to get slower. That's usually how it goes. Four point zero six. So you ran the exact same time. You're done. No, you're good. No, that's fine. So you ran like point zero four slower. That's perfectly good. We're done. I'll grab your shoes. That's a good job. This next one is called a barbell overcoming split stance push. So it's an isometric where you want to push into pins. If you don't have pins, I'll show you uh, an actual a wall version. But you want these pins to be set up where once you do the barbell which I might have them too short right now, but you want your actual, yeah, they're too short. You want them to be at a quarter stance position when you get to your toes. So you kind of just play around with it for a little bit. And you're gonna go under, hit the toes, and then push as hard as possible. And you look at the joint angle position. This is a quarter squat position. And think about when you're sprinting, what position you usually hit is right on your center of mass, 
is either gonna be straight leg or it's gonna be like le le legitimately the smallest knee bend in the world. So you can actually produce force vertically. So what this does is you're pushing and you're producing max force trying to move this pin, which unless you're extremely strong, you won't move it. So you're developing max strength, but you have no load on your body. So imagine trying to squat 365 pounds, 405 pounds to develop max strength. But think about how, how much that messes you up for the whole week because you just put 400 pounds on your spine, on your legs, on your back. You're gonna be tired for a whole week. You could do this, two, three sets of this, develop the exact same amount of max strength, but you didn't put 400 pounds on your back. So now you're good the next day. So you can go ahead and do these. You might be too strong for it. If so, we'll do the wall version. All I want you to do is, well, I'll make these a little bit taller. It's push into these pins on one foot as hard as possible, okay? You're gonna feel a little bit of your Achilles. It's gonna be a little flared up. You're just gonna be right here, okay? Sorry. Whenever you're ready, we can do it. I'm scared that you're gonna, I'm scared you're gonna fucking shove this uh, freaking squat rack through. So you're gonna get on one foot and you're gonna push into your calf as hard as possible and try to move this literal squat rack just with the calf. No, you're gonna go under, yeah. So get on your, on your back. And then go, go under. Sorry, I'm really close to you. Now, go on one foot. Go on one foot. I'm on one. Get, get your foot under. So this is gonna be right under your body, so a little bit closer. Yep, now push up as hard as possible. I'm gonna count for you. Come up tighter, sorry. Yeah, it's, it's a little awkward because I don't have the actual pins. So come closer, yep, closer. Ready, set, go. One, two, three, as hard as possible. Four, five, six, seven, eight, done. Cool. How'd that feel? Wasn't racked. You oh, fell on your Achilles, right? Yes. Okay, next one. Next leg. I want you to push as hard as possible. I want you to literally try to move this thing, right? Ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, six, seven, eight, done. How'd that feel? Good, right? It's hard. So it feels goofy, but you just develop max strength. And now you sit for two, three minutes and you develop more max strength. That's all you're doing. It's real, it sounds stupid, but there's a reason why there's sprinters who run 9.9, .9, they never touch a weight room, right? There's a reason why there's guys like Matthew Bowling who looks like a twig. He's not built like a bodybuilder, even like Carl, even like Carl's extent, like a football player, but he's running this fast. It's because you have isometric strength at the Achilles, at the patella tendon, throughout the entire body. So once you get that isometric strength, you can run extremely fast. You don't need to get extremely strong in the back squat or anything that they've told you in high school. All you gotta do is this. Um, I'll show you a quick wall variation. You're right here and you're gonna get into these same joint angles, right? You get into this, this kind of like straight leg 90, you can even go completely straight leg or you can go bent. When you do bent, it's more, it's more soleus and more knee. When you do straight leg, it's all Achilles, which will be more max velocity. This is more acceleration, right? So you're right here and all you're gonna try to do is try to push the wall away. So you're here, you're one, two, oh shit, I'm slipping. You wanna do an actual ground. If you wanna move forward, move out a little bit. You wanna do an actual ground and then push one, two, three, right? Do that for three to four sets of six to eight seconds. Never go above eight seconds because you want max strength. You don't produce max strength over eight to 10 seconds. You're probably just gonna start doing less intensity, which you don't want. You want max intensity. Um, both legs, and then you might slip. It's not as good as the pins, but if I'd rather you do a little bit of slipping and you could do this versus just squatting too much loads that you can't even have ha uh, handle, right? You're squatting 300 pounds and you're doing a half squat because you can't even squat it correctly. You're doing this and you can't even squat. You might as well just do this, build the isometric strength first and eventually progress to barbell movements. I'm gonna stand here because I just don't want you to just shove this entire thing off. So I'm sorry. It's gonna be a little awkward because I don't have the pins, so my bad. But usually the pins are literally just like squat pins where you fail. It's like simple pins, I just don't have them. All right, ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, you see all this? Six, seven, eight, done. So in sports science terms, you can go, you can go. In sports science terms, ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, come on, let's go. In sports, time, in sports science terms, we call this peak force, right? So you wanna develop a lot of peak forces at short ground contact times and joint angle specific angles as well, right? So angles that mimic sprinting, which would be something like this. But you can develop a lot of peak force in exercises like this where you're going for max intensity and even exercises like resistance sprints. But what they don't know about barbell squat is you can get up here and when you're doing something, you're only gonna get peak force in very specific moments like right here. This isn't joint angle specific to max velocity sprinting. 
and then when you're up here, it's easier. So you could do accommodating resistance to get more peak force at the top. But at the end of the day, peak force is the game and stuff that has high power like resistance jumps, resistance sprints, or high power like this is gonna develop peak force, which is what actually transferred to your sprinting. So that's just some sports science stuff you could know. Um, yeah, one more set, but you can chill for now. How that feel? Chill, right? It's hard at the moment, but then you sit and you're like, oh shit, like I didn't just put 400 pounds on my back, right? Like you're chilling. <laughs> and you're gonna feel strong on Monday, I promise. You're gonna feel strong. And then the rest of the workout will be a little bit faster, but a couple more exercises, okay? Ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, damn. He did it. Sorry, this next one's called a death drop. So that last one is three sets of six to eight seconds, five to eight seconds. This one will probably do three sets of three to four. You wanna play around with this, be really careful. If you're a beginner, I just want you to do calf raise to drop jump like that, where you're raising to your calves, drop fast. But if you're more intermediate advanced, you could do this variation, where he's gonna get onto a box, go ahead. And all he's gonna do is drop off and try to get off the ground as fast as possible, okay? So whenever, it's fine, it's all good. So whenever you're ready, just drop off and then get off the ground like the floor is lava. Pop. You see that? That's all you do. You don't have really have to rest in between the reps. You just do three to four reps, two to three sets. Let's get straight to it. We can just keep going. This one's a little more intense, so you could get a little bit of joint pain here, so you need to be very careful. A good standard I usually do is whatever your vertical jump is, so let's say it's 20 inches, you jump off of 20 inches, right? So if you have a 30 inch vertical jump, you can go off a 30 inch box, but you only have like an 18 inch vertical jump, 20 inch, 22, just drop off 22 inch. The safest route is just drop off like two bumper plates that are like eight inches off the ground and start off there. You can, ready? Pop off, yep. Get right back up. Two more. Does it have to be the same like Nope, you're good, it doesn't matter. The goal here, you keep going, you just keep going, sorry. The goal here is literally once you touch the ground, pop up the floor like it's lava and jump as high as possible, right? So when the floor is lava, your feet are hot. You don't want your feet to be on pure heat. So you're gonna get off the ground as fast as possible and also jump up high. It's gonna develop elasticity. It's gonna develop your stretch running cycle, eccentric greater force development, um, ankle stiffness. Literally everything you could possibly do is probably one of the most potent exercises you can do for athleticism. And it's also in the Speed Academy. We don't do it phase one, we usually do it phase two, but I'm having him do it right now. So in phase one, you might see something called a calf raise to eccentric drop, that's all it is. All right, good, we just rest. You can put it down, we're good. All we're doing is double broad jumps, go as far as possible. We're in a street right now, but we're just waiting for no cars, then we're going, it's not that deep. All right, whenever you're ready, just try to jump as far as possible. So with broad jumps, it depends on how I program in the Speed Academy, but usually we'll do either singles or triples. Right now we're doing doubles. Um, it's usually gonna be three to four sets of singles or three to four sets of triples, uh, which would be three right in a row. I'll show you a video demonstration in the actual app so you can see. So broad jump's really good for developing acceleration and horizontal power, which I jump as far as possible. How'd I feel? I was looking a little hard. I over resisted the second one. I didn't think you were gonna go right there. Uh, no, I tried to do the like, fast. Yeah, oh, like here. rapid. Um, when it comes to broad jumps, when it comes to broad jumps, we follow the same type of principles where we'll measure it or time it. So obviously you're going to measure with this one. So you just jump as far as possible, put a cone where you jumped and where you started, and then just try to beat it out by half an inch, an inch every workout and measure the actual distance. And you, you know, just progressive overload from there. So that's all. This one is called an oscillation squat. I did this a long time on TikTok and I couldn't explain it because it was TikTok. You don't, you only get six seconds. So everyone was making fun of me. It's not a half squat. All you're doing is you're getting to a parallel squat or half squat, whatever you want to call it. And then you're bouncing from quarter to parallel, quarter to parallel. And you're just bouncing out this amortization phase, all right? That's all you're doing. You're trying to bounce as fast as possible. Some people, even when they're doing here, they just kind of bounce like this. They literally like their, their feet leave the ground because there's a stretch reflex in the knee and in the Achilles tendon. Uh, you can do it body weight at first, and then if you wanna go up to a barbell, you can do a barbell. Usually, in the Speed Academy, in phase one, we're doing either for time, so when we're body weight, we'll go for like two sets of 25 seconds, and then like in the later phases, we'll go with weight, and we'll go like two, three sets of 10 or eight. So yeah, you can just go body weight first if you want. Literally, we're just getting down to this parallel position, and then bouncing out, bounce out, bounce out. Bounce up, you're not jumping, okay? So bounce up, bounce up, just like that, okay? So He's gonna hop a little bit like that, but you're not jumping, you're not extending all the way, you're just bounce up, bounce up, all right? 
So what you're gonna see here is when you get to the bottom of a jump or a sprint, there's something called an amortization phase at both of the tendons, right? So that's where it isometrically locks before the concentric phase goes. This needs to be strong or you're gonna see a lot of, you're at like eight right now. You're gonna see a lot of moments when someone jumps like this or they're sprinting like this and their leg gives out on them. If your leg ever gets out, they're lacking isometric strength in the amortization phase. So this is a real simple way to teach your body how to get in and out of that bottom portion so you can be more explosive. All right, and if you can't do this, your stretch running cycle is gonna be really weak. You're gonna have a very poor stretch running cycle. So this is like the foundation to building that. You can start off with a barbell when you feel good. It's a little burn, it's real simple. It literally feels like nothing. You shouldn't feel a burn. Maybe a little bit of a burn is, is not that, it's nothing crazy. It's very low intensity. Go from zero to 45 pounds, and you're just gonna bounce out the bottom as fast as possible, okay? People usually get stuck right here. They get stuck at the bottom, and that's where they give out when they're sprinting and jumping, is that, you know, touch point. So this is really important for all athletes. It doesn't matter if you're a jumper, you're a sprinter, whatever it is. Even a football player like him, he needs this. What he's doing is a barbell RDL. Uh, in the Speed Academy, we usually do hypertrophy reps for this, so either be six for strength, um, you can go lighter for strength as well. I mean, less reps, but usually be about eight to 10, just because you're trying to build some hypertrophy in the post chain, just go ahead and do a regular RDL. Um, today, he's done a lot of the workout and it's one of his first times doing this exact workout. So I don't want him doing too much. Like I'm just gonna let him stay at a plate. He could probably do all the way up to three plates on an RDL, but I don't want to kill him. I don't want him having any doms at all. So go ahead, you just get straight into it. You can turn around actually, face this direction so they can see you. Um, so the important uh, portion, I don't know if you notice of every single workout, you can go, I'm just gonna talk. A uh, important portion of every workout you're gonna see is uh, do, does do six to eight. If you feel any type of dom, stop, okay? Um, important portion you're gonna see in every single workout is there's always gonna be one squat pattern and one hinge pattern. I believe that everyone should be having a compound squat, whether it's body weight squats or a body weight hinge. Um, and that's about it. So you can also do accessory lifts like soleus raises and stuff like that whatever type of weak points you have, but we always want some type of compound movement. Soleus raises and stuff like that, whatever type of weak points you have, but we always want some type of compound movement. We're literally just training a hinge. Like we can go heavy in weight and do three plates, but I don't want him having doms. I just want him to have the pattern of hinge under load. So it's not too complicated. It's just a regular hinge. You can go heavy if you want, but usually you try to keep it light and explode through the top, right? But for the most part, Carl has really good form, so we're chilling. Um, that's six. Six? How do you feel? Five. Done? You're good. Simple, right? I'll have him do a couple more sets, probably two to three sets. I think I'll put the sets, I'll have text up here. Um, if you guys enjoyed. If you want to increase your max velocity speed, I've taken athletes from this to this. And using the elastic-based training methods I use in this workout is some of the biggest keys that's transformed their speed and should help you increase your speed too. So in this video, I'm going to give you reps and sets, some of the best exercises to increase your top end speed, and everything you need to know to run faster. Small issue, some of this video is going to be recorded in the basketball gym with the voiceover with my iPhone, and some of this is going to be recorded in the grass with this actual mic. So if it's kind of bouncing between microphone levels and the camera looks different, I'm sorry. I'm trying to give you the best workout possible. All right, we're going to start this workout with some switches. We're going to do extensively. And the goal here is instead of landing full foot, we're actually gonna land the ball of our feet and don't let our heel collapse. This is just an extensive plyometric to build some strength in the Achilles tendon and improve that reactive strength index. Next thing is gonna be triple switches. So now we're here and we're switching three times. Maintaining good posture, good pelvis position, landing on our center mass every single time. Next part of the warm-up, we're doing some momentum-based pogos. We're hopping forward on two feet, but we're being quick off the ground. Not fully maximal, but about 80% jump height. Now we're doing the same thing sideways, both directions. And lastly, backwards. Now that the warm-up is over, we're going to go to the iPhone for the first exercise of this workout. The goal of this drill is to keep your heel from collapsing, so you want to stay the ball of the foot, land in the center of mass, go about 10 to 20 pounds in terms of resistance in your dumbbells each hand, and try to jump as high as possible off one leg. One set is just going purely right leg, and the other set is purely left leg, eight reps in total for each leg. 
Second exercise for this workout is gonna be 10 meter flies. All you're gonna be doing is building up for 10 to 20 yards and then sprinting as fast as possible through a 10 and 20 yard uh, stretch. You can do 20 yard flies, 30 yard flies. If you're intermediate to advanced, maybe go 20 to 30. If you're a single leg jumper, swap this out for a 10 minute dunk session. But if you're a sprinter, you're trying to run, increase your top end speed, maybe for soccer or football, then this is gonna be one of the best things. Before we keep going, comment what is the best sport. Personally, it's basketball. And I'm actually about to run slow as shit because I just worked out for two hours and I feel like a complete pancake, okay? So I don't want you to expect much of me because I don't expect much of myself. I don't know if that's depressing or empowering. Start off with a jog in and to a sprint. <laughs> Here's an example of Gavin Scher, my fast athlete doing a flying 30. For the single leg hurdle hop, find three shoes, space them out between about 15 to 20 feet and try to jump as high as possible while timing yourself in between these hurdles. For the first exercise, we're gonna go with explosive box step ups. Usually I'll go with dumbbells and the goal for a weight is 40, 60% of our body weight. You never wanna go above that. Even if it's way too light for you, then the goal is just to step up as fast as possible. The height of the box should be a B about six inches. Yes, I just stuttered. That was really fucking sad, right? So she'd be about six inches. Four to six is gonna be the optimal height. After this, you're going to superset it into unweighted drotch step up jumps. So this is explosive box step up. A lot of people like to go 12 inches, but the issue is it's a lot, it's too much propulsion. And when you go too heavy in that, in that state, you're just developing compensatory methods for sprinting. Now, if you're a two foot jumper, heavy box step ups make a lot of sense. But if you're a sprinter, especially for max velocity, I would even go shorter than six inches and go for four inches and just try to step up as fast as possible. So rest about 30 seconds to a minute, then go into your step up jumps. Now what I want you to do is this is four total sets. You're gonna have two sets where you're going with the six inch box step up, where it's really high, and then two sets where it's very low. Like this is almost nothing compared to how, how tall it is. But then the goal is this is even more specific to sprinting. So you do two sets that's a little more power oriented. And now this is more speed strength where it's shorter and we're doing our, our box step up with this. Same weight, 40, 60% of our body weight. Then we deload and do explosive step up jumps from an even smaller angle. When we strike down, this looks just like sprinting, right? Right under a center mass, and then we pop up. If you wanna increase your speed like this workout with full workouts that's progressed throughout the entire month, join the Speed Academy in the top link in the description or the pinned comment. If you wanna run faster, in this video, I'm gonna give you a full speed workout, something I've been building in the Speed Academy for my athletes who have already ran sub 11. I have two guys who are running 10.3 and 10.5 in the 100 meter. This workout has helped them run faster and it will help you run faster. I'll give you reps and sets, let's get straight into it. Okay, so I just played sand volleyball for about two hours, so my body's pretty beat up, but I still need to do this speed workout so you guys have some reps and sets. So I'm only gonna do one set today because it's actually supposed to be a deload week for me. But sometimes I don't listen to my own body even though I coach people who run some of the fastest times in the world. Sometimes I don't even follow the same principles I teach them. So the easy one we're gonna do is an extensive plyometric warm up. All we're gonna do is focus on making sure our heel doesn't touch the ground on a skip, sideways skip and backwards skip, 30 seconds each. But I'm just gonna go down and back for each one because I'm already warmed up. There's a difference between this and regular skipping because regular skipping is very lazy. You're healing to toe, heel to toe, which can be pretty helpful for one foot jumping. When we're trying to improve sprinting, we're only hitting the ball of our foot right under our center of mass and having the intention to pop off the ground. Not a high jump, but just a small little pop off the ground will help really start building that elastic energy you need. I'll do sideways skip, we're under over, but even though it's a karaoke, we're still hitting the ball of the foot, not letting the heel touch the ground at all. Same way, other direction, doing this for 30 seconds each. Another cool thing about this is it also builds a lot of basic level coordination, which you'll get in stuff like PE class, but you don't get when you start getting too specific in your training and you might be lacking that because maybe your coach just doesn't teach you basic coordination like A skips or something like that. Now that you've done that for 30 seconds each, we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes of the workout already, which before we get into sprints, we're gonna have a little bit of a primer, which we're gonna be doing to develop explosive power. So this is mainly for acceleration, where we're going to resisted bounds. So bounding where we're trying to cover as much distance as possible into unresisted 10 standing bound test. 
there's a huge difference in here. The resistive bounds is going to develop explosive power and really overload that, especially the horizontal aspect, which is what you need to run fast. And then when you do the potentiation afterwards without the weight, you're gonna be going even farther. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of an example here and then we'll get straight to it. All righty, resistive bounds. Sorry if it's hard to see, but hopefully you can see me. You wanna go a little bit heavier on this one. If you're a stronger athlete, probably go up to 45 pounds. Um, it's hard to give like a random number, but usually around 10 to 20% of your body weight, but if you're trying to improve specifically acceleration, which is that first, you know, five to 25 yards. That would probably go something around 30% to 50% of your body weight. Going a lot heavier will make you force you to produce a lot more horizontal force since you already are strong, but you can do it in an explosive manner. So all we're doing is just bounding as far as possible. This resistance is a lot for me, only because like I said, I just played sand volleyball for two hours. So a lot of my force is gonna be low, but that's why I'm only doing one set. Usually for these, for resisted bounds and the unresisted bound contrast, if you're an intermediate to advanced athlete, we're gonna do two to three sets of 20 yards for the resisted bounds. <coughs> and then for the unresisted, it's a 10 bound test. So I'm gonna show you how to go about this right now. All you're gonna do is the standing 10 bound. So we're gonna go into a broad jump, jump as far as possible, and then the first foot is that first bound. And then you go bound one, bound two, bound three, and you're going for 10 full strides. How far you get on those strides is pretty much the distance you can do. And you wanna mark that down and try to beat it the next time. I'll do two sets of this one specifically because I really need this for my weaknesses specifically. So if you can see me, I got about right here, which is not too bad. I don't know the exact distance and I don't really have the time because it's about a storm right now, but hopefully it's around 80 to 95 feet. The goal for intermediate to advanced athletes will probably be around 90 to 110 feet. If you can get that, you probably have some very good explosive power. What's really cool about the standing 10 bound test is that the first three to five strides, so the first three to five bounds, is actually a test of explosive power. So you're improving your raw power output. And then after that, five to 10, those strides are gonna be a lot more reactive. <coughs> so you're getting a good mix of developing explosive power and reactiveness, which is kind of hard to do with any exercise. Two, three, four. If that got on camera, bro, I just busted my fucking shit. I definitely got in the 90s to 110, but I just busted my fucking shit. Oh, I'm tired today, bro. I shouldn't be doing this workout, but I'm starting to try to make a series of workout Wednesdays where we get you guys at least one speed workout from the Speed Academy every Wednesday. Now the Speed Academy is a 12 month program, so I'm probably never gonna post every single workout, but at least you're getting one or two acceleration or max velocity workouts to improve your speed that is just not on the internet. Stuff you'll see in the Speed Academy, stuff you'll see me do with my 10.3 athletes or 10.5 athletes, or my guys who run 4.4 into 40. So for a standing bound test, like I said, you're just going as far as possible for 10 bounds, mark it, and then that's a contrast. So you first start off with the resistance. If you don't have resistance, do hill resistance bounds or find some type of way to have someone get a band around you. And then you wait about 30 seconds to a minute. You do the unresisted standing 10 bound test, go as far as possible, mark it down, rest for about two to three minutes, and you go through that contrast again, or some people might call it a superset. You do that superset about two to three times, and you'll get a pretty good stimulus for developing explosive power in the first five to 10 yards, and developing that explosive reactiveness that you need, the reactive stiffness you need to improve your max velocity sprinting and acceleration. For this next exercise, we're gonna get into resistance sprints, but I'm actually gonna do something I haven't taught before, which is heavier resistance sprints. The goal with resistance sprints that I've, uh, I think I haven't taught correctly in the past is that you actually need a high enough stimulus in terms of velocity drop off. So if you can drop off your velocity, which means if you run 2.0 seconds, if you could drop that off and make you, yourself run slower with the resistance by about 50 to 40%, you're gonna target something called peak power. And when you're running without resistance, you hit peak power around five to 10 yards because you're a beginner athlete who doesn't have that much power. So you hit your max velocity and that max power you're producing in only five to 10 yards, sometimes it's 20 yards for some athletes. So a good way where you can overload this and 
consistently improve that rate of force development and that peak power and really overload it, which you can't really do in most exercises unless you have like some really high tech like force plates and, and velocity based lifting, is doing heavy resistance sprints. Now, the issue is people don't have the equipment to test velocity drop off. And honestly, the equations, you can do them with your phone, but they're really complicated. So I'd su suggest you to go look that up yourself. But what you can do is probably around 40 to 60% of your body mass and resistance is gonna be enough to develop that peak power and be somewhere around that threshold of 30% to 50% velocity drop off. So for right now, I'm gonna go about, I think 95 pounds in resistance in this sled right here. And I'm gonna sprint for about 20 to 30 yards, one to two sets because it's a deload week and hopefully that will help you with your acceleration. Playing sand volleyball today, and uh, I started off really good. Like I was serving really well, and then all of a sudden I realized that I do not know how to time the ball in the sand, because when you're in the sand, it's like a lot more unstable, because sand just like kind of falls and meshes and all that type of shit. So I kept trying to jump and make these huge spikes, because I was just trying to flex that and jump high to all my friends. And then I quickly realized, I was like, fuck, I am out of my league because I did not know how to time that shit. <clears throat> I got dunked on. Dunked on isn't like when you go for a spike and someone hits you right back, like twice. And it was like some 6'4 guy and I was like, fuck man, I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> but it's all good. Now they call me in a real volleyball court, like a basketball court, it's GG's. You're gonna get fucked on. My two foot bounce is just out of this world right now, bro. Just adding some weight to the sled. Trying to get it up to 90 pounds and then we're gonna get after it. I'm actually gonna put on spikes for this one. When you're trying to do resistive sprints or max over sprints, if your goal is max velocity, then you probably don't need spikes. But if your goal is acceleration development, which is what a lot of people need, that horizontal power, then you probably wanna put on some spikes because you're gonna get better angles. And because you can get steeper and you have more stability, um, you'll run faster and develop more power. So you probably want to try to get some spikes or some cleats. I'm going to have some cleats with me because I left my spikes somewhere else. So for now, I'm just going to use some cleats just to get a little more stability and call it a day. Yeah, I would time these sprints, but I don't have my FAT with me today. And like I said, it's about a storm and I just played sand volleyball. So all these times are going to be slow, but I'm really just trying to demonstrate this for you so you can run faster. You have a full workout with reps and sets. So uh, I'm going to get straight to this. Hopefully you can see me like this. I think I'll just sprint this direction, yeah? Call it a day. And like I said, what's really cool about the heavier resistance sprints is that it's more of a force stimulus. So if you have strength and velocity, that's how you actually improve power. Power is just strength times velocity. So because this is more on the strength side, but you're still testing velocity because you're trying to sprint as fast as possible, it's not as damaging to the joints long-term because if you're trying to run a flying 10, then that's pure velocity. And yeah, you're producing force, but it's a lot of stress to the tendons, to the joints. You get real sore, but with resistance sprints, you might feel soreness in the muscle, but your tendons won't be beat up. So if you want to sprint another day and do this again, you probably could, I wouldn't suggest it, but you're not gonna be as beat up as you would if you're doing flying 10s or max effort 40 yard sprints or even a 100 meter dash. So that's what's kind of cool. For reps and sets for resistance sprints, I'm gonna show you do it one more time, but probably about five to six sets of 20 to 30 yards. So in total meters of sprinting, 100, maybe 80 to 120 yards, up to 150 max. You can go up to 300 if you're a beginner or 200 if you're a beginner, but that 80 to 150 for me, and for my athletes, you usually do the trick. So yeah, load it up heavy, 40, 60% of your body weight if you're going for early acceleration, that first five to 20 yards, and then sprint as hard as possible, time it or race somebody if you can, and just get after it. And for rest too, for rest too, do about two to three minutes. If you sprint 20 yards, then maybe do three minutes. If you sprint 30 yards, maybe do four minutes, but somewhere around that range, two to four minutes will do the trick. I don't know if any of that got on camera, but goddamn, was that heavy as shit. Okay, so I don't have a rim with me, but the next exercise I would do, and I'm just gonna probably put it up on the screen or at the end of the video when I do the full workout layout, I'll probably put it there is low rim dunking or max effort dunks, three to five minutes of a dunk session, 
two foot specifically. So if you're trying to improve acceleration, you do two feet, but you're trying to improve your max velocity, I would do one foot dunks, three to five minutes, put a timer up, go in the lower room, try to get some dunks off, or try to touch something like the ceiling right here above me, try to dunk a basketball, whatever your goal is, even if it's long jump or triple jump, practice a couple of those technique aspects, and that will be the next portion for that workout. But now the next thing is going to be a stomping step up. So stomping step up, some people might call it a drosh step up, is where we're going to improve early rate of force development in a smaller range of motion. So, so we're gonna go very light with this, 30 to 50% of your body weight. And the reason is we're trying to develop power. Some people might call it explosive strength. Some people might call it speed strength and it's very delicate. So one of the hardest qualities to develop is speed strength, explosive strength, that power aspect of your athleticism. Very easy to develop absolute strength or just your one rep deep squat max. And it's very easy to develop velocity from fast ground contact time plyometrics or max effort sprinting, but it's hard to develop power. So we have to keep it light enough where we're keeping a fast velocity with the bar, but heavy enough so we're actually getting a power stimulus. So what we're doing here is we're simply, I would do this with dumbbells first. Like I said, 30 to 50% of your body weight, probably hold that in dumbbells, but if you don't have that, you can do a barbell. And we're doing a stomp. So this is gonna stimulate a early rate of force development stimulus. You could just step up and do this, but if you do that stomp, Right here, you're getting that early rate of force development, trying to explode up as fast as possible to the top, and then hold that position for maybe one second or 0.5 seconds. Now, if you're too unstable to do this, you can simply just step up like this. And for the height, I'll probably do four to eight inches off the ground. If you go too high and the thighs above parallel, you're gonna get a lot of lower back into the stomping setup. So you want your thighs to be below parallel on the stomp, and the highest peak you get is parallel when you raise your thighs. But before that, it should be a little bit below parallel, so the force you're producing force from looks like a one foot jump, a two foot jump, or some type of sprinting stance, like an acceleration stance, or a max velocity stance. So we're just gonna get straight into it. The best way is probably start on the side, and I'll do about three to four sets of three to four reps. Saw the weight start to fall off because I forgot to put on clips. But you see, I'm pretty tired today. So, like I said, it's really important to remember that you do not go above 30 to 50% of your body weight. Even if you feel like it's too light, that's the purpose. You wanna improve the ability of speed, strength, or power, which is your ability to move lightweight fast. So yes, if it feels absolutely way too light, maybe you can go up 10 pounds or something of that nature, but you wanna do a smaller range of motion and moving the weight as fast as possible. And if the weight is too heavy for you, even 60% of your weight is way too light for you, then the goal is to move it faster than you did last time. Put a stopwatch or put some type of velocity tracker on there and see if you can keep moving the bar faster. That's gonna give you max intent, which will help develop power and fast switch muscle fibers. Called the sprinter stands isometric. So we're gonna get into this stance where our knees aren't completely locked out, but they're not bent where we're like here into like a half squat position. We're gonna get just a small knee bend. So we have good tension into the wall. And then the goal is to raise to the ball of the foot. So find that position, raise to the ball of the foot. And then you want to dig the ball of the foot in down into the ground. And that should raise your lower back and your glutes off the ground. You wanna hold this isometric position for about 25 to 30 seconds. Put a timer up, hold that position. You're gonna feel a lot of hamstring, a lot of glute, a lot of calf, but you feel lower back. You're probably arching your lower back too much and you do not need that much separation off the ground. It can be a very small separation almost to the point where it doesn't even look like you're off the ground. The only thing you need off the ground is the glutes and the lower back. Push that lower back into the ground and breathe through this isometric. This is a great way to develop that stiffness because isometrics are one of the best ways to develop isometric strength, which has a lot of qualities in terms of tendon elasticity and the stiffness on initial ground contact. So this is a great way to develop this and also develop hamstring health to prevent further injuries, kind of like what a Nordic hamstring curl would do. Four reps and sets, probably about two to three sets of 25 to 30 seconds. You can go farther or add some weight, maybe 10 to 20 pounds right here on your stomach if it's too easy for you. This last one is a split stance soleus calf raise. 
So you can do it a couple ways. You can let the heel hang off so you can get a little more eccentric length on the Achilles tendon and the calf, and then you go through this range of motion. If you have a seated calf raise machine, that's the best variation, but I don't have a seated calf raise machine where I'm at right now, and most people are not gonna have it, so you just have a split stance position where you're putting all the pressure into this front leg. Try to move this foot far back enough, not too far, but where the knee is straight down into the ground, but you have all the pressure on this front leg, right? So lean forward, put some mass of your center mass right here into it, and then do this calf raise. Once this becomes too easy, you can do 10 to 12 reps with good form all the way and all the way down. Then you wanna add some weight in a backpack or some type of weighted vest, or you can just grab you know, 10 pounds right here and slowly progressive overload while putting all this pressure into here and going through this full range of motion, targeting the soleus, which has a lot of correlation to acceleration and bringing in more speed into your max effort two foot and one foot jumps. So I'm gonna go through a full set just to show you how it goes. And that's the full workout. You'll get reps and sets probably somewhere right here, hopefully, exactly what it'll look like if you get the Speed Academy, a full 12 month program to transform your sprint speed. You get monthly workouts that are five days a week, progress to over four weeks, and then you can improve your sprint speed and keep progressive overloading throughout the entire year as if you were just training with me in person for an entire year, but for literally 20% or 10% of the price, and you don't have to see me in person, you just do it by yourself, done for you. So hop on the Speed Academy somewhere right here or in the link below, I'll probably give you like a gift so you can get the first month for only $5 with a special code, so check the pinned comment or the description, you'll get that special code, it'll probably end within the next 30 to 60 days. And if this full workout isn't enough, I'll probably give you another full workout or some type of video that YouTube will recommend you right here.